What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. Let's get right into this. Today we are playing Pokemon TCG Pocket. Let's get right into this. And today we're going to be playing with the new Haunter. Uh, with Gengar just in general. Because, you know, Gengar decks are very fun. Also, you guys enjoyed it the last time I did it. So why not play with the deck again and just try and beat people up for the most part. Um, but first of all, before this, the whole thing starts. Uh... The newest Haunter, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, just that it's able to do 50 damage possibly with a solid, like, good enough coin flip. But also, it's not going to make huge waves inside the game. It's not going to come up a lot to where you're going to have to use it. Especially if you just are able to set up alone with the other things or use Ghastly. Or even the normal Haunter, just having that secured 30 damage instead of trying to tail, trying to, like flip for 50 is so much safer and so i would still recommend the original haunter other than this one uh but nonetheless it's still okay to use especially if you do uh, are you like a risky a risk it for a biscuit kind of guy then go for it you know but in the end this is the pikachu deck that we're playing against right here and right now yeah we have a uh, clefairy up front we have our ghastly in the back just like how we want it we also have clefables in our pocket uh so that we can just use those at any time to go against this guy we have a pokeball which is awesome we're going to use that really quick before we uh do anything crazy here we're also going to change this into clefable and yeah we i believe we get a ghastly here let's see oh another clefairy awesome that's perfect because then that just gives us a lot more bulk to then set up our ghastly uh for later on rounds and also we still have our clefable that does 40 damage every single time already causing pressure on this pikachu to where they need to move quick or else they can have issues and since they only have one pokemon on their bench right now they're only able to do 30 damage unless they get more pokemon on their bench which i believe this turn they put out a zapdos i could be wrong but i believe that's what happens and that still only gives them a hit of 60 damage which is definitely not <laughs> not good for them um they just are not quickly getting stuff at least not getting it fast enough to where it'll cause them any uh like it'll save them at all there's no saving grace um now it switches back over to me i could potion the clefable but it's kind of useless because then that would only make it have 60 hp and that's what i'd get taken down on because i can't take any of his backline stuff so I'm just going to play with it. I put my energy on Ghastly. I have Gengar EX in my deck for when it happens. We're just going to Magical Shot here and hit that Pikachu down 240 uh, just to make it scared. Make it very scared. One, two, three, pop. Nice. And then we do have the Clefable in the back to then take it out if it doesn't do anything about only being at 40 damage. Um... I believe that he does use a potion just to like keep it alive and then I still hit it next turn I hit it down to 20 and then he moves in Zapdos but yeah for the most part just the Haunter in general it's not gonna make a huge difference in meta games uh but yeah it's 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 very risky no matter what just because I love having a safe 30 damage also 30 damage is pretty dang nice for one energy for a second evolution uh while you're working on it especially if you already have a lot of pressure from the enemy side being able to attack with that and just go for it is very nice and it still has 70 damage which isn't too bad i mean 70 hp which isn't too bad it's at least can survive you one attack maybe two attacks at the start of the game um but yeah we're just gonna do another magical shot here it's gonna take it down to 20 hp and we still have 100 hp on this clefable in general so he's gonna have to do something and like i said he's gonna switch into that zapdos because he is scared of having this out at this point and is just trying to build up that zapdos as fast as possible which is understandable honestly <laughs> i get it i understand why he's doing it um but yeah so we're gonna see what he can hit with his thunder um i'm hoping that he doesn't do a lot i don't want him to do a lot um it'd be perfect in a great world to have him do nothing but also what we're gonna do he's sabrina's me he pushes this out 
I am going to X speed it back over into the back and get my Clefable back out. And then I am going to Giovanni. Uh, I'm going to potion the... Uh, I'm going to... When it gets to Gengar EX, I'm going to potion the Gengar EX uh, to heal it back up to full. And then I will be uh, moving it back, going back to the back line. Boop. Bang. And then also there's that on there. Making it the Gengar. Come on. And then we put that potion on there, heal it up. And then we also Giovanni this Clefable. We the reason we Giovanni this attack is I'm I'm thinking big brain here. This Zapdos is at 130 at the moment. If I Giovanni, that hits it down to 80 because it will do 50 damage. So even if he uses a potion on this Zapdos, it will still be in one-shot range of my Gengar. So no matter what, his Raichu is a one-shot, his Pikachu is a one-shot, and his Zapdos is a one-shot. So all I need to do, and Gengar has a full 170 HP, and is one energy away from, you know, killing everything. So, <laughs> I literally cannot lose this no matter what. Um, and that's basically what you need to do. You need to, you need to kind of metagame it, just to make sure that you get everything down to those one-shot ranges, or make it so that you just have no chance of losing. Um, always get your attacks in. Always make sure to hit stuff down, but also play it careful. Make sure that you're not being stupid while doing stuff. <laughs> and then you're basically in a no chance to lose situation like this, where you're just kind of all set and just waiting for their next move to see what they do, even though they have nothing really that they can do to stop you. Um, so he's just looking around, looking at all his options that lead to nothing, and trying to figure out he's just going to peck here. He doesn't even try and do anything else. He knows he can't do anything else. And this is where I swap Clefable out, put Gengar in, and disable him from using any kind of, you know, support, <laughs> support card at all. All right, there he goes. Go on, Gengar, you got this. He's got this. He's definitely got this. All right, we just do the spooky shot, and... Bam, Zapdos out, and now literally everything I take out wins me the game. And everything that he does have is less than 100 HP, and he concedes. And he already used both his potions as well, because he used the one on the Pikachu and the one on the Zapdos. And, wait, he used the one on the Pikachu and... Yeah, did he use the one on the Zapdos? No, he didn't. Maybe he didn't even get it. I don't know, but no matter what... He was screwed either way because he couldn't potion anything to save him. Anyway. <laughs> yep, so we just give him a heart. Thank you so much, man. And it's time to get into the next game. We're into the next game. Let's get right into this. And what is our starting hand looking like? I did these last night, so I don't really remember completely. I was very tired. I was just basically living on a thread it's also very cold in our apartment right now because the heat is struggling at the moment and we just have this one rinky dink heater <laughs> that heats rooms at a very slow pace it still does really good for like the size that it is but it's just not enough uh but we have a tauros on the other side of us we do have clefable once again in our hand so at least we can use that we also have a haunter which is at least nice. It's always nice having the mid-stage evolution, so at least you can know that you can go from Ghastly to Haunter right away. And, yeah. Okay, this guy is very normal right now. Two Tauroses and a Farfetch'd. Okay. <laughs> so, Pokeball going in there, and Ghastly? Ghastly, yeah. All right, cool. And so we place him down there, and then we put the energy once again on Clefairy after using this Pokeball. And getting another Clefairy once again. Alright, so we have a very similar start off to last game, which is very nice to have. It's one of my favorite start offs to have, is the Clefairies right away. So then you can change them to Clefables when you get those cards. And then you have Ghastly to build up in the back. Also, if they Sabrina you, you just get put another Clefairy in. Uh, so it's just very nice and simple overall. 
But yeah, Tauros, 80 damage already. And he's just going to start building up that Jigglypuff in the background. And this isn't any normal Jigglypuff, it's the Sing one. I'm going against a Sing Wigglytuff deck. A uh, Sing Jigglypuff deck. Alright, there we go. Clef Able is out and moving. Out, moving, and grooving. We put this energy onto that Haunter, and then we Magical Shot it. And then we just have one more shot left in it before it goes down, unless he potions it. Um, and yeah, right now, yeah, I'm very confused by his energy choice, <laughs> because he has Psychic and Water. And at this point, I'm just assuming, okay, he probably just has normal type Pokemon. And so he's just running weird energies, because why not? He doesn't have to worry about energy for the most part. Which normal type, type decks are getting more normalized? He Sabrina's me, I put in Clefairy. Uh, but yeah, normal type decks are getting more and more normalized. Funny, funny. More normalized as this game goes, because we just have a lot of normal Pokemon that do solid work. Uh, whether it is Farfetch'd, that does 40 damage right off the bat, or it's something else, like Tauros that does 50 damage after 2 energy. I personally don't like Tauros, but I understand the usefulness of it sometimes due to it having that 100 HP. Uh, so it has a lot of HP for, you know, tanking a lot of different things if you really need it. The only bad thing about it is the retreat cost costing 2, and so it's not really helpful in some sort of ways. It's one of those things, it's kind of like Kangaskhan. Where you put it out there, and you, you're just waiting for it to die. Uh, <laughs> like, there's there's nothing there for you. Uh, he's got the Wigglytuff built up, and now it's all just who sends in their thing first. Because I don't want to be first, and he definitely doesn't want to be first. Uh, we got Sabrina. Alright, so we use our Professor's Research. What do we get? Another Gengar EX, and then, oh, just, yeah, another Gengar EX, then a Haunter. So if we get a Ghastly, then we're doing pretty well. Uh, and then I retreat this, go back into Clefable, and then we just knock out the Tauros, I believe. Or do we just end turn? Yeah, we knock out the Tauros. Uh, <laughs> there are some cases where you would want to just end your turn there and not knock out the front Pokemon especially if they don't want to switch in their thing to a certain Pokemon or different stuff like that or if you don't want your big Pokemon to take a hard hit first but no matter what this Wigglytuff is going to be hitting this Clefable it's going to hurt but he has no points on his side right now so I feel quite comfortable with my placement at the moment he also Sabrina's I bring in Clefairy because I don't want my Gengar to be attacked. Uh, so, yeah, that's what's going on right now. And then Clefable, I'm going to send in next turn after this Clefairy gets taken down. And I am going to hit a 40 on this Wigglytuff so that it goes down to 100 HP. So no matter what, it gets one shot by my Gengar. So, in the end, I just feel very comfortable. I just very I just feel very good about my whole positioning and everything like that. We do get Clefable right after my Clefairy gets taken out, which honestly kind of sucks. Uh, it's just like really, really, but it's also like all right, that's fine. We just magical shot it, bam, and then all right. So then it's at 100 HP. The Tauros is at 100 HP. The Farfetched is at 60 HP, then he has a ditto in the back that has 70 HP. Now, I have a lot more win, I have a lot more like win conditions here, aka ability to win, than this guy. He basically just needs to hope for me to be caught sleeping two times for him to take out my Gengar, and if he doesn't, then I'm kind of stuck here. He backs this off into the back of his, uh, area to bring out a Tauros that will attack for, for 60 damage. Uh, very solid play. I mean, nice. And then what I'm thinking here is, alright, I'll potion my Clefable, so then it brings it up to 60, and then I'll Giovanni so that it hits 50, so then Tauros is midway down, so then maybe if I get another Giovanni out of my deck, then I can smack down that Tauros. 
Um, so, we're just waiting to make that play. And I'm just sitting here thinking about it for a while before actually going for it. Just because I don't want to mess up. But also, if I do get another Giovanni, if I do get another Giovanni, then I hit this down next turn and then everything is happy. Or at least so I think. I magical shot it for the 50 damage. And then, all of a sudden, this dude pulls out another Giovanni and takes out my Clefable. And there I am just left with my Gengar. And I don't really want to put any other, like, thing in. I don't want to put a Ghastly in. I don't even have a Ghastly to place in. But even then, I don't really want to place that in because he can easily Sabrina and then, you know, take it out and then just hit it. And so I'm kind of left to my own devices here by having my Gengar EX. And there's an X speed, but nothing really else. So I just placed the energy on my Gengar EX and then smack the Tauros because that's all I can do. No matter what, if I were to Sabrina here, he has three more things on his bench that he doesn't need to put in the Wigglytuff and insta-lose, you know? And so at this point, I just do my spooky shot boom and then we just see what he plays which i know it's going to be the wiggly tough and then he just needs to hope that he gets two sleep cycles so he needs to hope that i just stay asleep for two turns in a row and then he could probably take me out so let's see boom all right i'm hit down to 90 and then we wake up, and that's all she wrote. He is taken down. There's no way for him to come back to this. We also have a Ghastly, and he concedes. Yeah. Whew. But, yeah, no matter what, Haunter, of course, it didn't make any actual showings in this video, just because it's not actually important. Uh, it doesn't really do anything for the deck or change anything. Um, but it's still there nonetheless, and it may be useful in some cases, just not for a lot. Here is the deck, if you guys want to play it. L uh, let me know if you enjoy it, how it goes for you, and thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching. Peace out.